So, in terms of the experiment plan, uh, it is uh, it's quite a bit different. Uh, so, this is where you know the paths start diverging between business analytics and and test and learn. Uh, planning has very different considerations, and uh, uh, and you know it has a very different sort of framework on uh, how you want to think about uh, uh, about planning a planning a test. So we'll go through all the building blocks of uh, of the experiment plan and uh, chuck through them one, uh, one after the other. So the first one is essentially just you want to scope uh, your test, right? So what that means is you want to know what the test goal is, right? You want to know what the success metrics are. You want to know what the hypotheses are, right? Uh, you need to agree on what the test parameters are going to be, right? And uh, when I say agree on, you know that's deliberate because it's subjective. There is no hard science. There is some science to it, but then it's still a very subjective. And when you come to it, we'll talk about uh, you know how to choose uh, test parameters and uh, success criteria. Right? What's the success criteria at the end of it? <coughs> so once you have the scope, then it's time to lay out the design. So. Uh, you know, we'll talk about different types of designs, factorial designs, and how to optimize uh, certain test designs. Uh, what are the different approaches you can uh, take to uh, to make the design more efficient, right? To get uh, more learning by doing less, right? Uh, so that that's the goal of uh, design. And then you want to start planning, right? You want to create a, a sampling plan. How are you going to sample? There are a couple of different sampling strategies uh, that you can think about. Uh, what's the sample size? How much sample to use? And uh, in general, you want to come up with a project plan that you know takes into account you know instrumentation when what is going to happen. You know, create a timeline and such. Right. Now let us design. So this part gets uh, uh, gets a little involved um, in terms of the methodology and some of the the statistics behind it. Um, I'll walk you through a bunch of things that uh, that might seem like they're like fairly involved or fairly complex. The goal is not to sort of make you experts in design experiments uh, in this uh, whatever an hour or so that we are going to spend on uh, on test design, but to give you a flavor for all the things that are out there. You know, sort of catch you up on what the terminology is, and so when you are working with folks who are uh, very deep into experimental design, uh, you can one talk their language, and at a high level, you have an understanding of how things work under the hood. Okay, um, so let's look at look at the terminology. Uh, factors, right? Factors are these are controllable dimensions that uh, you think have an effect on the metric that you're trying to improve, right? So, uh, for example, m messaging. Would be a factor, right? It's a knob you're trying to move. Think of them in terms of knobs, right? It's a knob you're trying to move to see the needle move, right? So think of it if you're sitting in front of a machine with a bunch of knobs, and there's an indicator for you know something that machine is measuring. So you're turning different knobs, and that uh, that needle is moving in different directions based on how you turn turn a certain knob, right? So think of factors as knobs, right? And these are your segments these are the different treatments you want to try you know anything you think will have an effect on uh, the final outcome we're done with the designing we're done with the optimization of the design right so we've, we've covered a lot of ground in terms of uh, you know uh, creating uh, a test plan so here in terms of actually planning for the test you want to uh, make sure you have the time frame logged in Sampling plan. You want to come up with a sampling plan. What's the sampling strategy? What's the sample size? Uh, you want to focus on instrumentation. You want to work with product and marketing folks to make sure that there's adequate instrumentation. Most of the uh, uh, the experimentation, test and learn kind of projects that I've worked on uh, end up having inadequate uh, instrumentation. And sometimes it's just hard to tell upfront. Sometimes it's easy to tell. But to the extent possible. Uh, we should spend time up front to make sure that there is adequate instrumentation. We have the test data. There are there are sort of uh, uh, three kinds of you know high level analyses that uh, that I can think of. One is behavioral analysis. This is not a standard part of 
uh, of test and control experimentation analysis but this is something that i just love to do and i found a lot of value in in doing this what this is is you know for some time let us completely forget about uh, the control group right let us just look at test group there is so much value to be had just from the test group alone without even comparing the reason to compare to the control group is to to see what the impact is right let's forget about what the impact is let us we changed the experience of these customers these are the in the test group let us see if actually it made them change behavior in some unexpected ways right did they behave did they have a knee jerk reaction to uh, our uh, our proposition did they have a long term change in behavior because of that right a lot of that can can be extremely valuable so put the control group aside just look at the test group uh and and I'll I'll tell you exactly how to look at it and give you a couple of examples of how I found value in it and then you know this is sort of the standard uh, approach uh, prove and disprove hypothesis so we came up with certain hypotheses to begin with uh, looked at what we want to uh, uh, achieve so go and validate those hypotheses you know reject or fail to reject right then quantifying impact so all is fine and dandy at end of the day if you're working for a for profit organization what it really means uh, boils down to is you know how much money does this mean to me right so boil it down to the dollar term why do you think why do you think it's in, this is an important step why are we even going over this why why making recommendations and and tight recommendations why is it important 